Welcome everybody. I hope you are right in this nice and sunny morning. Um, so I'm giving you a speech today about how to be a designer, how to become a designer and why to be a designer. So this speech is not about design. It's about the designer, the guy who is doing the job, who is a everyday designer and um, making money and making a living of this profession. So a few words about me. Um, my name is Robert Santoy. Uh, I'm an award-winning designer. Uh, I'm Hungarian, but living in the UK for seven years now and working on all sorts of interesting projects. Um, I was working for fairly big names like uh, Coca-Cola, Barclays, O2, and all the others. Um, one of my recent projects is the Shazam application on Android, which just went live last week. So basically, I've redesigned the whole Android application for them both on the phone and tablets. Uh, my, one of my biggest success was the MyO2 application, which I've designed last year. Uh, and it was a huge success. Uh, basically, it's a self-service application. So if you are an O2 customer, then you can get all sorts of information about your tariff, about your account and everything, basically. So that's me. Uh, and before I make a start on how to be a designer, I would like to talk about why to be a designer, because I think that's the most important fundamental question. Because obviously you guys can do whatever you want. You know, you could be a developer or you could be a business analyst or whatever. But why to be a designer? Why choose to go for this role? So the very first reason, I think the most important reason why is because it's fun. It is a lot of fun. You wouldn't believe how much fun it is. There is not much stress being a designer. I mean, depends, obviously. Depends on the role, depends on the project. But usually it's not that stressful. It's really fun. You can meet really interesting people, interesting projects. You are not just allowed, but requested to be creative. If you are creative, then you have to be a designer. It's that simple. You can be creative as a developer. You can be creative as an architect. But designers are the real, real creatives, I believe. So you will have all sorts of really interesting and important projects as well. So it's not just about having fun. But actually, if you are a designer, then you are one of the guys who are shaping the future. Uh, because, you know, everyone is talking about all sorts of applications now. Everyone is talking about internet and the web. And design is really important and more and more important. So this is another reason why, because design and designers are really in demand. And it will be in demand for a long while. As I just said, you know, loads of the companies are realizing that they should be there, they should be on mobile, there should be an application or a website or whatever. And there is always a need for a designer or a designer. Other important thing is flexible working. Usually, if you're a designer, you will be allowed to work flexible, working from home, which is great. Working flexible hours, you know, you can work wherever you want which is again great. You don't need to be sitting in an office all day long. You can do it in the park. You can do it in a cafe. You can do it back home. So it's just a great way of working. And it's a really good uh, work and life balance. And finally, which is again really important, money. It is a really good way to make a nice amount of money. So obviously you can do it two ways. You can go permanent or you can start contracting. Both ways, I think it's you can make a fairly decent decent living from this. Uh, let's say if you go permanent, then um, as a senior designer, you can make in this country something like from 50 to 70k, or even more depends on the field, depends on the project. As a contractor, again depends on your level, but it's fairly easy to achieve about 300, 350 a day. But I know designers who are working for 600, 700 a day. So that's a really nice and decent income. 
So that's why it's really worth to be a designer. The next question could be is what kind of designer? Because obviously there are all sorts of different designers out there. Uh, there is this huge buzz going on about UX design. I don't know if you guys are familiar with UX designers and UX design roles out there. Um, and also user interface designers or web designers or graphic designers. So it's just to clarify what's going on with these, all of these designers. So basically, the way I look at it is you can talk about planning and production. So UX design, information architecture, researchers, user testing, all of these are planning phase. These guys usually never touch Photoshop. They never touch Illustrator. They don't know how to draw. They might draw, do some sketches and stuff like that, but this is mainly focusing on planning. And then the other kind of designers, the production phase. So these are the visual designers who are basically putting together a concept design, polishing that concept design, uh, putting together a web design or any sort of graphic design. So again, depending on your ideas about design, you could be on planning side or you can be on production side. So let's talk about these uh, in a bit more details. So let's start with planning, UX design. UX design is a huge buzz word at the moment, really popular. Uh, UX designers are really, really in demand at the moment. So let's talk about what they do. So basically, as I said, UX design is planning phase. This is where basically a project starts. So we start talking about uh, concepts basically and planning out the user journeys and planning, 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 planning. So this is the phase before you start working with Photoshop, before you start putting together the final Polish designs. Every good product, no matter what, has good planning phase. It's really important. Back in the days, I mean, I'm a designer for more than 15 years, so I know how it started. I was there when Adobe Flash started skyrocketing, basically. So back in the days, it was like no planning. Just the designers jumped on the project, started putting together things, icons, buttons, all sorts of things without any planning. And they were actually planning everything in their heads. So that method doesn't really work anymore. It's not great, not professional, and really, really expensive. It could be really expensive. So UX design is a great way to reduce cost on production. That's why mainly companies are hiring expensive UX designers because they will reduce the cost on production. Because basically, when you put together the concept designs, when you could put together all of these plans, also prototypes, then you can start testing based on the prototypes. You can start do research based on prototypes. So you don't have to go through all the design process to find out if that will be the right solution for a certain problem or not. So you can do it in planning phase now, which is just great. And it's, as I said, a great way to reducing production cost. So what is the output of UX designers? Uh, it really depends. Um, UX design is a really interesting, I just call it minefield, because every single time I'm talking to anyone, they are defining UX in a different way, every single person. On top of that, every company is defining UX in a different way. Just to give you examples, you know, I used to work for a company, my official title was UX designer, but actually that was a visual designer role. Or other parts like my role was lead UI designer, but that was much more planning UX role. So even companies doesn't really understand what's going on here. But officially, if you like, the output of a UX designer is anything that helps stakeholders, visual designers and developers to understand the problem, to understand the concept and to understand the solution. So these outputs could be wireframes, concept designs, site maps, user journeys, interaction maps, sketches, screen flows, prototypes, demos, or anything else. Basically, it could be really anything what helps people to understand what you want to do. So that's UX in a nutshell. So what about visual design then? So basically, visual design 
is the next step of the planning. Uh, I like to call you visual designers UI designers because, I mean, you can say I'm a web designer, you can say I'm a graphic designer. It doesn't really matter in the end of the day, it's all UI, uh, which is user interface design. So even if it's a website, a website needs a user interface. Even if it's an application, it needs, it, it has it have a user interface. So the user interface is basically what the user see and interact, interact with. So if there is a button, that's a part of a user interface. If there is anything on screen, that is part of the user interface. So basically, if you look at it that way, UI is the art of functional and interactive design. So as a UI designer, you always think about simplifying, you always think about how the users will interact with this application, how they want to solve these problems, how they want to use the application itself. So it's really important to think about function and interaction. It's always that's, that's the most important things to focus on. So the output of visual designers, again, anything to help stakeholders, again, to understand the design. UX designers, usually UX designers and UI designers working together, helping each other. Uh, because sometimes UX designers are not familiar with standards. For example, let's say we are designing an iPhone application. A UX designer is not necessarily aware of iPhone application standards, but the UI guy will be aware, so they can work together to solve the problem. Uh, also, UI, UI designers need to make clear everything for the developers. They are working together with developers, so supporting them with everything, all the documentations. So basically, design specifications, interaction designs, prototypes, again, UI designers sometimes prototyping as well, putting together little demos, especially when we're talking about an animated application, it's really important to show what you think, because if you just explain to a dev guy what you mean, or just explain to a stakeholder what you have in your head, they won't get it. They just don't get it. So it's better to put together little demos or prototypes. Again, you can use all sorts of tools to, to do that. We'll talk about that later. So basically, that's the difference between UX and UI, or planning and production. So now let's talk about how to start. So let's say you guys want to be a designer because it's great fun, because it's really important, it's interesting, you want to put together iPhone applications or tablet applications or whatever. So you decided to, to, be, to be a designer and start to be a designer. So how to do it, how to make a start? Because obviously there's a huge competition out there. Uh, I read a really interesting post on LinkedIn the other day. Someone said that the fact you have Photoshop on your computer doesn't make you a designer. And you need to understand that these are the people you are competing with if you want to be a designer. So there are loads of people who are not really designers, but they have Photoshop on their computers and they're selling, trying to sell themselves as, as designer. So my experience, and that's what I suggest to do to people when they ask me how to start this career, is basically, obviously, you will start as a junior designer. That's, that's, that's the way you start. Um, so you need to understand what a junior designer does. And, and when a company is asking for a junior designer, what they mean, and also you need to understand what, you, what the outcome you want from this role as a junior designer. So what I suggest to do is first of all, if I start to be a designer today, I would definitely start working with agencies. And the reason it's a good idea to work with agencies because with agencies you will have loads of different, different projects, not just focusing on, if you go client side, let's say, Barclays is offering you a junior designer role. It's great. Hope, I mean, you will get more money, a bit more money than an, an average a junior designer that way, but you will focus on Barclays and you will focus on Barclays branding and Barclays related projects. The reason I'm suggesting to go agency side first, because then you will work on different projects. Maybe you will work on a project for Barclays, another project for Coca-Cola, another project for O2, another project for whoever. So you will have, within a year, you will have a broad range of projects in your hand. So when you want to move on, you want to go, and I want to be a senior designer now, 
Then agents will ask you, so what projects you worked on? What companies you worked for? Then there is a huge difference when you are saying, yeah, yeah, I was working for Barclays. Who else? Well, you know, I was designer for Barclays, so I was working for Barclays. So on the other hand, if you worked for an agency, you could say, yeah, I was working for Barclays, I was working for Coca-Cola, I was working for O2, I was working for all these companies. So it's always a much better start. It gives you a better start. Uh, so that's why it's really important. Uh, obviously, you need to start looking for a job as a, senior, uh, as a junior designer. Um, how you do that? So there are all sorts of ways to find a job. Uh, obviously, you can go online, search for a job on job site, search for a job on, on Monster. These are all good sources. There are all sorts of websites. But I think the best way today to find a role or find a job is LinkedIn. And uh, it's a really powerful tool if you know how to use it. It's free. Uh, and it's just, just an amazing tool to network and find people and find agents because usually if you are a designer, the way you get a role is usually through agents. So an agent will contact you and ask you if you are interested in this role and you would say, yes, I'm interested. So, but how these agents will contact you? They need to know about you. LinkedIn is the best place to go. So basically what you need to do on LinkedIn, you need to put together a great profile about yourself it's almost like a CV, but it's a bit more than a CV. So it's not just a CV, but it's contacting people, being proactive. You know, you need to join certain designer groups, UX groups, UI groups, because these agents are hunting for people in these groups. So if they see you in that group, they might contact you when they have a role popping up for them in, the, in their da database. Also, you need to keep checking who checked your LinkedIn page. Proactively, you need to contact them, email them, like, hey, I'm here, are you looking for designers? I'm available. So you need to be proactive. It's always really important to be, to be proactive. Uh, another uh, important thing to know is how to pitch yourself. It's the other uh, presentation on the other side it's really important these guys are talking about how to pitch to investors if you want to start a business basically it's the same thing when you start your job when you start looking for a role you will need to pitch and these are really short pitches it's not exactly elevator pitches but you will have let's say 15 minutes to explain everything about you for an agent on the phone and it's not easy I'm I'm telling you that very first two, three times, it will be really difficult. But you just need to do it. You just need to, you need to do fake calls, even calling a few roles what you don't want to go for, just to practice. After a while, after five times, you will be relaxed, it will be okay, and you will be easy to talk about yourself, talk about the things you do, the things you want, and then, then that's the best way to do it. But I really recommend to start reading up on this topic because this itself, it could be a huge presentation about how to pitch and how to, how to do things uh, on a phone call with an agent. Uh, so other important thing, what usually you don't learn this in the school, but it's really important to start planning your career. career. So if you want to be a designer, don't stuck on junior level. Just don't. I was working for many companies. I've seen people working for a company for 20 years. Don't do that. That's the worst thing you can do. It's unhealthy. You will stuck. You will stuck to certain routines, certain methods, stuck on salary. So it's just not the right way to do it. You need to plan your career. It means you have to know when to move on. You start with an agency, learn as much as you can, do it for a year. After a year, even though you enjoy it, you have to move on. It's that simple. You have to move on. If you don't see that you can learn more, if you don't see that you can progress, you have to move on. That's the way you will become a senior designer. That's the way you step up on the ladder. That's the way you can more and more money and not stuck with certain things. So that's really important to plan. Uh, let's talk about skills. What skills to focus on? as a designer. So obvious skills, you need to be creative, of course, you need to be open-minded and you have to accept the fact this role is about non-stop learning. It's not like I go to uni, you know, learn my stuff and then just lay back and use my knowledge for the rest of my life. That's not that role. It's non-stop learning, non-stop developing, 
because there are always new things out there. You need to be aware of these new things. You need to be up to date. So you need to be really fo very focused on nonstop learning. Practice, practice, practice. So that's what makes you a senior designer when you have loads of knowledge behind you. The only way to do that is through practicing. Again, what I keep suggesting to junior designers when I'm coaching them is you need to focus on award-winning designs. There are all sorts of websites out there, um, and it's really important to check these websites, go through those designs, and analyze those award-winning designs. Even though you don't like them, even though you disagree, you have to do that, because for some reason, that website or that application won that award. So it's really important to start analyzing these applications or these designs to understand more about design. Also, as an exercise, what I suggest to do to junior designers is start copying these award winner designs. Not for a real project, of course, it's just for yourself. It's an exercise, it's practicing to understand things like spacing, typography, you know, all the things. Because through, through copying these designs, you will learn a lot, a lot. What you can't learn in a school is you can't just learn it. So it's just really important. Another important thing to focus on as a junior designer is collecting feedback and collecting honest feedback. So let's say you finished the project and then you were working with all sorts of people, you were working with developers, stakeholders, maybe directly with the client, you never know, but you were working with people. You have to collect their feedback because they will tell you what did you do right? What did you do wrong? How, how, was it, how was the experience working with you? Because that's really important to understand because that will tell you what to change next time, how to do it next time. And tell them you need honest answer. You don't need their politeness. That won't help you at all. You need their honest feedback. To tell them like, oh, sorry, but it was really difficult to work with you because you didn't understand the requirements. Because then you know you need to work on that skill. Tools to learn. Um, designers are working with all sorts of tools. Uh, if you go for planning, UX phase, there are tools what UX designers prefer. It's tools like, for example, Axure. Axure is a really nice software to put together really complex wireframes, prototypes, uh, and things like that. OmniGraffle is another tool I would suggest to focus on. Vigio, well, some designers are using that. I think it's a little bit dated. Uh, Balsamic is a great, great tool to put together concept designs, quick wireframes, user journeys, user flows. Uh, Adobe Edge Animate. Adobe Edge Animate is a really important software. I think Adobe Edge Animate is the most underestimated software out there at the moment. It's a great software to put together motion graphics, uh, UX prototypes, uh, and even UI prototypes is just a really nice and quick way. And it's multi-platform, HTML5, JavaScript based, so it will work on any device. So it's just a brilliant tool to focus on. Some sort of mind, map, mind mapping tool. I use MindNode usually to put together uh, interaction maps. So it's not about all the user journeys, but it's more like the interaction, like all the call to actions on a certain screens and the links from that screen. So yeah, it's, it's really a great way to, to visualize, again, what you want to achieve. As a UI designer, obviously, you need to focus on Adobe products, uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, maybe Adobe Flash. Adobe Flash is kind of dead now, but still, some designers are using it, mainly for prototyping. Um, again, Adobe Edge Animate is important. If you want to get into motion graphics, After Effects is a great tool. Dropbox is a really important and great tool for UI designers. The way I use Dropbox usually is whenever I put together a design in Photoshop, I upload it to Dropbox, check it on my phone so I can see if the proportions are okay, I can see if the font size is big enough, if the bot buttons are big enough and th things like that. So it's like an immediate connection between your phone and your computer. There are other softwares out there obviously to do the same things, but I just prefer to use Dropbox. Other really important thing is devices. Um, so to understand what you do, you obviously need to be familiar with the devices you are working on. As a senior designer, 
sorry, as a junior designer, you don't necessarily have a lot of money to spend on to spend on devices, or let's say the company you are working with are not investing in these devices, but you have to. You think about it as an investment for yourself. So, as a starter kit, what I would suggest today, obviously, it will be irrelevant in two years' time, but today, start with an iPod Touch iPod Touch is a great device, fairly cheap to buy, and it gives you the opportunity to test your design on an iPhone 5 size screen. So it's just a cheap and easy way to do that. An iPad, a full-size Retina iPad, again, through that device you can understand the tablet experience. Uh, Again, it's just really important because it's not the same thing. Designing a tablet application is a different thing. It's not the same as designing a phone application. Also, really important to focus on Android devices. Android devices are skyrocketing at the moment. I would suggest to go for the most recent Nexus phone as a starter kit. At the moment, that's a Nexus 4. I think it's really important. And then start designing on that device and understand the difference between different Nexus or different Android designers. If you have more money or the company is more interested to invest in more things, so these are nice to have. Obviously, it would be better if you have an iPhone 4 size device as well because iPhone 4 and 4S is still on the market and will be on the market for a while. Uh, proper iPhone 5, obviously, again, that's just give you a better experience. Next to the iPad, you should have an iPad mini because, again, the iPad mini or the seven inch device is kind of that's a different design, different experience again. And on the Android phone, you should have an Nexus 4, Nexus 7, Nexus 10. So basically, you can see whatever you designed on all the screen sizes. And you need to make sure that you are living with devices together. It's not just like, you know, I have these devices now, but actually, you have to use them every single day. Just to give you an example, uh, usually designers tend to be Apple phones. So what I suggest to do, try not to be an Apple phone, try to be flexible, try to be open-minded towards other platforms and other devices. Uh, just to give you an example, when I went to work for Shazam, uh, that was focusing on Android. And it was a great decision two years ago when I forced myself to use an Android device. I still have an Android phone, even though I have an iPad as well and I have an Apple computer, but I forced myself to use an Android phone daily basis because I wanted to be familiar with the Android platform. So when I finished the work at Shazam, the feedback from the developers was that they loved the fact that I was familiar with Android because the designer they had before, she had no clue. She had no clue about phone designs and especially not about Android. So that's important because if you want to work on that platform, you need to be familiar with that platform. So basically, that's what I would suggest for juniors. So let's say you worked for this agency for a year. You have all of these tools. You have some experience using Photoshop or Azure or whatever tools you're focusing on. Uh, you have some exposures for projects. You have some names on your CV. What to do now? So as I said before, I suggest to move on. Uh, maybe for another agency. Start kind of not talking about yourself as a junior designer. Just say, I'm a designer rather than a junior designer. And that's the way you will step up towards senior designer level. So when you reach the senior level, uh, again, you can still focusing on agencies or you can go client side. Client side usually is more relaxed, more money, and is you just have more time to think rather than must produce. So that's why I prefer client side. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's just just the way it is. You need to go through the junior and mid-level designer level to, to reach the senior level. So what is the difference between junior and senior level? So as a junior, you will be guided. There will be someone helping you out all the time. There will be a, a senior designer helping you or an art director or a creative director holding your hand and helping you go through your project. As a senior designer, obviously, you are on the other side. You need to help others. You need to guide others. And you need to do all sorts of things yet what you didn't do before. So as a senior designer, you have to have efficient working methods. So obviously you can't spend that much time on projects anymore. You can't fail that many times. You, you have to be creative, you have to be clever. Um, 
you have to be expert on the softwares you use. So as a junior designer, you know, you can get away with, you know, I have some Photoshop experience and I want to learn more. So obviously as a senior designer, you can't do that. You have to be expert using all of these softwares, uh, what you will work with. Uh, you have to be able to estimate, which is really important. It's impossible to do, by the way, but you are required to do that. So people will ask you in business, like, you need to tell me how long will it take to design such and such applications or such and such screens, and you will have to say something. So you need to learn how to tackle this problem. Uh, and the other really important thing is, as a, as a senior designer, really, we really need to be focused. You can't just lose focus. You can't just do mistakes. You have to be really focused on the project, what you are doing. But these are just the basic skills. What is even more important is there is one important skill what, for some reason, teachers are not teaching to students anymore. And... Uh, Parents are not teaching this skill to kids anymore, but I believe this is the one most important skill to everyone, not just for designers. It's the same for any role you go for, and this is the skill of, of negotiation. And that's what you need to learn through your junior years progressing to senior level. So what I mean by the skill of negotiation, I'm not talking about neg negotiating about your money or your, your salary and stuff like that. but. In fact, you will negotiate every single time, whatever you do, every single interaction with anyone will be negotiation. You need to understand that the project is not you. There are other people involved in the team. Everyone is working for the same goal and you have to negotiate all the time. So negotiation means trying to achieve a win-win situation. So negotiation is not like your project manager telling you that you have to do it this way and you say, oh, well, okay, you know, I, I will do it that way. That's not negotiation. Negotiation is you are suggesting different solutions. You try to achieve a win-win situation where business wins and you win as well. Or let's say it's a developer-designer interaction. Then obviously, again, you need to negotiate with the developers to, to achieve the best results. But you have to be satisfied as well. It's not just the developer saying that, oh, it's impossible. That's not the way it is. Let's find a way how it is possible or try to do a different solution and then you're both happy. So that's the skill of uh, negotiation. Also, you need to be expert um, and you need to learn how to be voter. Uh, if you know Bruce Lee, uh, he was a, a martial artist and he revolutionized, rev revolutionized martial arts with his be voter philosophy. So. It means basically be flexible. What Bruce Lee said is the way he was fighting people is when the opponent expands, then he would contract. When the opponent contract, I would expand. So basically it's being flexible rather than just sticking to one method. That's what he did basically. He said, we don't need these rigid fixed ways to fight. We need an intuitive way. We always need to adapt to the situation. And that's the best thing you can do as well. Be flexible, ignore the rules, ignore the old fashioned, old school methods, because they usually don't work every single case. You need to have more tools and more skills in your tool set, because one, t one time this, set of, this sort of method will work, with another project it won't work. So you need to adapt to the situation. You need to come up, come up with different solutions, different ideas. So it's really important to be expert in this kind of be water philosophy. Also really important to deal with, as you progress towards senior level, you will get impossible projects, impossible tasks, and you have to deal with them. So again, another uh, important person, Terry Pratchett, in one of his books, he was writing about dealing with impossible projects. And basically the way you, the way you deal with impossible problems is you dividing them to small possible steps. And that's the way you sort big impossible problems. It kind of sounds a bit silly for the first go, but if you practice it, you will understand why it's so important. It's, it's really important to understand this, this concept. And as I said, as a senior designer, you need to understand requirements. You have to be proactive. You have to be self-starter. You have to guide and coach junior designers. And you have to lead projects or sometimes lead a whole team of designers. 
So these are the main skills you need to focus on. There is one other, other important stuff what senior designers tend to forget is that keep learning. When, once, you le once you reach that level, you are not ready. You're never ready. You have to keep learning, even though you are working on this field for 15 years. Even today, I'm still learning new things. There are always new things to learn, so keep, keep learning all the time. Um, especially on a senior level role, you need to understand much more about the business side. You need to understand how to communicate with people from business. You need to understand why they're saying certain things and how to interact with them. And the more professional you are, then the more they like to work with you, the more they will like to invite you back to work on certain projects. So again, that's just, just really important. Um, so, freelancing. I think this is a really important topic again, because some designers tend to go for permanent roles and stay permanent. As I said, I was working for different designers before, working for a company for 25 years. That's just not the right thing to do. If you just do that, if you do that, you will never progress. So freelancing is really important. Even though you don't want to freelance, even though it's not for you, even though if you want to stay permanent on the long run, I suggest to go freelancing for at least a year just to get a taste because you will learn a lot through freelancing what you would never see and never learn as a permanent, as a permanent employee. So what the things you will learn as freelancing? So you will have a much deeper understanding of business, first of all, which is really important. That's, this, that's a phase when you will start understanding that how the free market works. That's when you start understanding that how money works. You know, you, are, you will understand that there are people invested in a business, it's their money, their risk, and you are trying to help them out with your best knowledge to achieve their goals. It's not always about you. Don't try to be too egoistic about, about design, but it's actually working together with them. Um, you will learn much more about the importance of producing high quality. It's really important because as a contractor, you will learn that the contracting field is not that huge as you think. I mean, there are companies out there hiring, hiring contractors all the time, but many companies, what they do is like, they hire you for a project. You work on that project for, let's say, five, six months. Let's say you work for Barclays for five months and then they let you go because the project is over. Uh, so they don't need you anymore, that's the way it is. So you move on to your next project, you start working for another company, but suddenly another project pops up within Barclays. So if they remember you because you produced high quality, you were able to handle stakeholders, they will remember you and they will ask you to come back and work for them again, it's really important. So with this again, the skills you will, other skills you will learn is networking. Really important as a contractor, it's really important. You have to network all the time. Talk to people, talk about yourself, talk about what you do, just be nice. Try to help everyone around you, no matter what. Even though they are not designers, they are working on a different project, help them, try to help everyone around you because that's how they will remember you. They will remember, remember you produce high quality, you are a nice guy, you are really helpful, it's great to work with you, so you are more than welcome to come back for the next project. With contracting, you will learn the art of negotiation. Again, I am keep pressing on this. Negotiation is one of the most important skills you can have. If you learn how to negotiate, then then you will be able to do your daily job. Uh, and yeah, you have to perfect that skill. And well, it's not that important, but money, obviously, as I said in the very beginning, as a contractor, you can make much more money. Is that simple? Um, so I told you about the daily rates as a contractor, but to put it in perspective, let's say Let's say you work for a company as a permanent worker, you make 50, 60 grand a year. So as a contractor, you can easily double that. 
double or depends on your contract, maybe triple that money a year. Uh, obviously, you need to be clever how to do that, but, but that's achievable. So again, that's just important to know, I think. So don't stuck on a, a certain, certain level. So that's the way of a designer in a nutshell. Uh, maybe, I think we still have some time. Let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about negotiation a little bit more, because I think that's, again, that's really important. Um, as a designer, it's really rare when you work alone. So basically, you have a dedicated project, you only work on that project, and then everything will be done accordingly your design. So that's kind of a ideal situation which, which never happens. Usually the projects are upside down, there is sometimes no planning or planning after UI design, so you need to redesign the whole thing again. So it could be stressful in a way if it's not the right project or not the right company. So you need to learn how to be a team player, again, through negotiation, the skill of negotiation, you can learn that skill and perfect this skill. Uh, so team player, what does it mean to be a team player? So as I said before, you will have to work with different people in the team, all sorts of people, maybe different designers in the team. Maybe it's a huge project, so you will have a lead designer in this project, you are a designer for this project, and you will have two other designers sitting next to you. So you need to work together. and. Basically, some designers find that really difficult. It's not that difficult to work with developers. If you already have the toolkit to work with developers, you have the language to work with developers, it's not that difficult. Work with stakeholders, again, if you learn how to do that, it's not that difficult after a while. But working with other designers could be really challenging and difficult because all of you have your own ideas, your own solutions, your own methods, and you will think, oh, I don't like that because I think my way is much better. Or the other designer would say, like, I think your solution is not great. I think we, go, we can go for this one and it will solve the problem better. So again, you need to be really, really open-minded. You need to be able to negotiate with these designers as well. Try to find the best solution. I think that is really important to understand when you work for a company, when you work on a project, it's not about you. It's not about you at all. It's about that business. It's about that project. Someone invested in that business, risking their money. And what you're trying to do there is helping them to solve that problem. And solving that problem sometimes is talking to other people, trying to see what solutions they come up with. Other common designer mistake is when a designer would say to a developer, oh, you are a developer, don't tell me what to do. I'm a designer, you are a developer, you just focus on developing, I'll focus on design. Don't ever do that. Don't do it. Dev developers have no idea about design. Still, they can come up with great ideas. They can help you a lot to do your daily job. So don't just ignore them, don't just put them away. Talk to them, work with them. It's, again, it's, it's just really important. So. I think that's where I would finish <coughs> Finish the speech about how to be a designer. Do you guys have any questions at all? Or if you don't have any questions, you can come around later and ask me, but if you have questions, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Um, what's the largest that a project uh, what's the largest that a, a, a project team gets to? Obviously, you're mentioning designers and uh, uh, developers. Um, what, what's the whole sort of team structure and how, how large can that get for a large client? Well, I would say it always depends on the project. Some projects are really small, maybe a three-people three team, that's all. Some projects are huge, like... Uh, just to give you an example, last year when I've designed the My Auto application for O2, that was a ever-changing team. So, it, so there was an information architect working with me. I started the UX work, but later on there was an information architect on the project. It was me as a designer. It was at least two or three people from the business side, two different dedicated developer teams for Android and for iOS. Those teams were, I don't know, five, at least five 
people in just for the Android team and another other five for the the iPhone team. Uh, so yeah, it could be a team of three or a team of team of thirty. So it really depends on the project, the size of the project, or depends on how many. Again, designer team itself could be huge. Maybe, especially if you are working with an agency, and you have multiple projects going on. So sometimes. On one project, there will be three different designers, but it's not just you working on that design. But then you start working on another design, another project, and another designer continue your work on this design. So it could be really a lot of people working on one project. You had a question as well. Hi, um, you've talked about how you've been working for uh, Android for the Android platform with Shazam. Uh, I just want to know if you've seen any specific trend or any popularity in a specific platform. As an Android, like for design, I mean. Yeah. Um, well, Android is a really interesting platform. Um, what I would say is obviously, at the moment, Android is is. I mean, I know it sounds wrong, but it, I would say it's almost more, more important than I, iPhones and and the iOS platform. So it's it's really changing rapidly. What I would say as a trend is. There are more and more designers started to focus on Android. Finally, there are started to be nicely designed applications on Android. Uh, you could stick to Google's recommendations with all of these holo style design, with this jelly bean style design. Like for example, when I started working for O2 on the My Auto application, that was ice cream sandwich style. But release two is coming soon for the My Auto application. We had to adjust the design for ice cream, sorry, for jelly bean style. But the new Android is just coming. So I guess there will be some, maybe some design changes again. So, so yeah, I, th I think it's just, rather than talking about the trend, I think the important thing is see the difference between Android and iOS. Because the mistakes what some businesses are making is like, oh, let's focus on iOS. Let's put together an iPhone application and then just do the same on Android, and it just won't work. It's just like, I had debates with people trying to tell me how people on Android don't use the back button because they didn't know Android, because they were focusing on iOS. But the back button is an important button on Android. You have to have back button. You have to rely on that functionality. Um, so again, it's the negotiation, skill on negotiation. Like O2 is a great example. O2 first wanted a iOS only or an iOS kind of copied application on Android, but I managed to convince them not to do that because it, have, it has to be a Android dedicated. So, so yeah, keep reading on Google's recommendations, keep checking other Android applications, and I think, I think you will be the one who will define the trend, who will define the next trend alongside Google. Perfect, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Go on. Are there any don't miss trade or professional shows that, you know, if people can get there, they should? I mean, like, you know, South by Southwest or whatever, or CES, or, you know, if you could get there, or is there something that happens here in Europe that they should try and get to see the state of the art? And then a follow on from that, you talked about updating your knowledge. Are there any places that you see as kind of the, the role model, the pinnacle, that you kind of look at? I've got, uh, the reason I ask is I've got a girlfriend who works for Xerox Park you know, and doing what you do. So, mm -hmm. so you know, you kind of think, well, what comes out of there is all, you know, worth having a peek at. You know, can you make time for that? Where is it you look to? All right, so regarding different events, I mean, there are loads of events going on all through Europe. So, you know, attend as much as, I, as you can. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there is a must have event. And the reason I would say that because you can learn so much online now. You don't need, I mean, you don't really need to go to events to see the events. You can see the events on YouTube, you know what I mean? Like, like things like that. And so, yeah, what I would suggest is rather than going on events and, and things like that, start focusing on learning online. There are loads of online websites where you can learn a lot. Also, I think great way to progress and great way to learn is checking award-winning websites, award-winning designs. One of, my, one of the best sources out there is uh, dfwa.com. They are collecting award-winning designs for years and years and the years. They have dedicated application sections and web design sections as well. 
it's great. It's a great source. Go there, check out what's going on. Those are the new trends, what you can see there. Try to understand what's going on there. So that's what I do for myself. I always, every single day, I spend some time researching about what happened that day or what happened that week. Um, new applications, what sort of... Uh, start using flip, Flipboard is a great way, again, subscribe to Flipboard's design or application uh, part. And then you will see new applications coming out, free applications or important applications last week. They have a weekly or daily kind of application set. And try to see them. Try to not miss the important application, I think, rather than not missing certain events. Like, just to give you a few example, examples, if you never heard about Clear, it means you are not up to date with applications because Clear is fairly old now, but that was a huge bang when it came out on iOS. Unfortunately, it's iOS only, but it's something you have to know. Or paper, again, paper is an application what was everywhere on the news. If you are a designer, you have to know about these applications because there is a reason why there is a buzz about these applications. There is a reason why people are talking about these applications. So it's just import important to analyze and understand these, these solutions and these applications. Is that answered your question? All right. Any other questions? No more? Uh, I would subscribe to all the techie, techie ones. So obviously, I mean, the great thing about Flipboard, again, I'm referring to it again, because then you have a collection of all, everything within that one platform, if you like. But obviously, obviously all the big ones. Uh, what I really recommend to check out is, um, um, hang on. I keep checking it every single day and I don't remember the name. Is uh, Dribble. Dribble is a great, great source. It's really brilliant. You can see all sorts of new stuff coming up there. P designers are sharing different solutions, different designs, b even work in progress stage. So you can learn a lot how they do their work, how they create wireframes, for example. Some, sometimes it's not that always how to put together a wireframe. So Dribble is definitely a really nice place. Adobe has a dedicated space for designers called Behance or something like that. That's again, that's really important. If you subscribe to Adobe Cloud, then you will have access to that place and you can put your, your stuff there so the designers can reach it and you can discuss about design. The great thing about being in these places is that the community is really, really friendly and they give you opinion, whatever you do. So you upload the design and they will tell you like what you should do or shouldn't do or, or things like that. So yeah. Anything else? Hello. Hello. Where are you? Here, here. <laughs> At the top, behind. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. Go uh, on. You've mentioned a couple of inspirations. Is there any um, other inspiration, inspirational websites for referring for designing and wireframing as well? Well, wireframing. <laughs> wireframing is not really visual, is it? I mean, I mean, depends on the wireframe style. It could be really visual, but. Um, Well, I, th I think the most places I visit is, as I said, is Dribble. Uh, FWA is important. Just just make a search on Google for award-winning websites or or awards like best the best web web best designed applications or in 2013, and you will have a loads of a big list of designs. Or start searching for interaction design. So I don't really have dedicated places where I go every day rather than Dribble or FWA, but I keep researching all the time because even though you have a favorite website, after a while that website could be outdated easily because people moved on or, or whatever. So, so keep finding new places to get inspiration. That's what I would suggest to do. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, any uni universities? Uh, I gave a speech in MSM, MSM University. It seems like a good one, but I'm not really familiar with the unis in this country, to be honest. I'm Hungarian, so yeah, I went to uni in, back in Hungary. But, but yeah, MSM University seems like a good one. One of my designer friends 
who is a really good clever designer he I think he went there as well so yeah but I mean yeah I'd, I'm not even sure if you have to go to university to be honest to be a good designer I mean as I said there are all sorts of good sources online what you can learn from is just amazing like yeah and, and lucky the other lucky thing about this is usually as a, as a designer, people not really asking you about where you finished uni or what sort of education you have for some reason. It's not like when you are a developer, you have to have computer science degree with design. I mean, I'm going through job specifications every single day, loads of them. And it's really rare when I see that people are actually demanding you have to have degree in art or have to have degree in design or, or things like that. So I'm not saying don't go to university, please do. But there are other, other sources as well. Just another important information about universities. There was a research already three years ago, which is important to keep in mind. And this research said if you go to a university today, let's say this is a four years course, or let's say five, after the first three years, your knowledge is already out outdated. So keep that in mind. So after the first three years, you're already outdated. You have to learn more. You have to, even, even if you go to uni, Parallel to uni, you have to keep yourself up to date and keep learning because even the teachers in uni not up to date. So, yeah. All right, if you have any other questions, guys, or want to talk about more, find me, I will be around here. So let's have a chat. Thank you.